Uh, six years ago, we lost 13 rhinos. Last year, we lost 1,004 rhinos. It is crazy. We are going to lose the species. We always lost rhinos in this country, but they were at what one might term a manageable level. If we don't all start looking after rhinos, we don't have rhinos for the next generation. And that is a fact. We have tried everything, but we're under siege. Um, people don't, won't hesitate to shoot you. Yeah, at the moment, I think we've, we've been fighting fire with fire. The problem is, once an animal is worth more dead than alive, I mean, it's just, how are you going to conserve these animals? If we allow the rhinoceros to disappear, what is next? If we cannot save a big species, a flagship species, we as human beings will have failed. The problem is massive. The problem is an international crisis. We have seen since 2008 some 2,600 rhino slaughtered unnecessarily for their horns. We have seen some uh, uh, 930 million rands worth of assets stolen from our country. Since about the mid-70s, we estimate over 100,000 rhino have been poached across the face of Africa. Because of the strong numbers of rhino in South Africa, we have now become the last bastion. As a direct result of the slaughter of our rhino, provincial, private and national parks are severely affected, which is detrimental, obviously, to the rhino and to all of the support economics that go behind rhino conservation. Een wit rhinosterkooi is doodgeskiet en nog een gewond in die waterberg gebied in Limpopo. Die valken sê vier verdachtes is in hechtnis geneem met een rhinosterwoering wat in hulle besit gekry is. Meer as 37 rhinosters so ver gestroop in die eerste 42 dae van die jaar. To find her dead and, and the way she was hacked to pieces uh, was, was horrendous and at that stage you, you just don't know what to do. You, you, get into, you get into such an emotional state. And probably even more traumatic is to find a little 11 month old baby that after nearly 24 hours is still alive in the bush. When it eventually died, we brought the vet in and we decided to try and understand why it had died. And the bullet had basically gone in very low in the chest and had ricocheted off the rib and gone through every organ of its body. We were very lucky that our second rhino poaching that happened in 2012, um, they shot the mother. It was a miracle that the mother's baby, which was 18 months old, was not shot. We don't understand how it survived. In fact, he's named Max and he's called Lucky Max because he survived. We had to make an, a plan. If something like that happened again, how would we react? We also had to start looking at bringing in rhino security, which we, we did, but obviously it's incredibly expensive. So unless we as a community were prepared to start looking at the whole area, there was no way that any one of us in the Waterberg were going to be able to stop the poaching. You know, even though Save the Waterberg Rhino started, it is going to be two or three years until we have the funding to really lock down our area and shut it off to poaching. We got involved with the Waterberg Rhino um, right from the onset um, with Tessa Baber's initiation of the project as we believe that a collective is stronger than an island mentality. The rhino and the survival of the rhino goes beyond simply the rhino. There's so much more to it that, and there are many components of, of our industry, be that um, the pure wildlife industry, breeding and selling of animals, its associated um, activities and tourism and hunting are all affected by the, the rhino situation. So there are many dependents on those industries. So if the rhino is affected, so are so many others and it goes down to the grassroots at the community level. Uh, Save the Waterberg Rhino is an NGO and, and uh, as well as a PBO um, and our sole purpose for existing is to benefit the community. 
we run various projects. Um, uh, one of them is environmental education, which um, I believe you have to win the hearts and minds of the people before you can win the war. So we've got a, a program running in the local townships where we uh, collect school kids, take them out to the reserves, show them rhinos in the wild. A lot of them have never obviously been on a game reserve, let alone see a live rhino. We also run a training program. Uh, this year we trained 26 um, anti-poaching rangers. Um, it's a year course. Uh, it's nearly like military training. Well, you know, rhino poaching is uh, it's, it's such a high-priced um, uh, industry today. It's so much money involved. Um, so your people has to be trained very well. We've got a military specialist uh, who's doing all our training for us. You know, from firearm trainings all, all, all the way up. Of course, you know, all these syndicates, they, they, they're very well trained and they know what they're doing. They're not stupid. You know, doing, doing any uh, anti-poaching work is a very dangerous uh, job to do today. Um, people don't, won't hesitate to shoot you. Uh, people, they don't care. They come in with AK-47s, high-caliber rifles, and their aim is just to get on. They don't mind. They will, won't hesitate to, to pull that trigger. Equipment that we use uh, during our anti-poaching operations, first of all, your ranger has to be kitted out. These guys sometimes stay in the bush for two to three weeks. A bit more high-tech equipment, uh, like night vision cameras, thermal cameras, to, to see at night, because the poachers, uh, they love the night. And even our local police force sometimes don't have the capacity and the equipment to do their job. So we support them. We've got a trailer that, um, that's kitted out to do roadblocks. It's called, got all the traffic signs in. It's kitted out. We've got radios in it. So if we do get to a crime scene, uh, that we can have comms. Um, we currently have a, a, a rhino sniffer dog in training. Um, his name is Vito. He's a 12-month-old German Shepherd. He will only be the fifth rhino horn sniffer dog in the country. And he will be then deployed at, at the roadblocks and Vito is able to smell rhino horn if it is um, uh, hidden away in the vehicle. Um, he'll also be trained to smell out arms and ammunition. Vito will be a big help um, at the roadblocks. I don't necessarily know at this point if we are going to have rhinos in 15 years as we know them in these wild open spaces. We will have rhinos perhaps in very intensive protected areas. Um, it really does depend on how the world can go forward in finding a solution for the rhino. We need to get our own house in order. We need to demonstrate to the world that we can take care of the situation even though it's extremely expensive. I'm not of the school that believes that we're going to see the rhino become extinct. We've learned some very nasty, expensive lessons, but there are some wonderful, dedicated individuals who are determined uh, to make a difference from the point of view of the conservation of the species. I firmly believe we will have rhino in 15 years. Uh, all you have to say is not on my watch. We won't lose these animals on my watch. You know, I, I can only just say that we are now in the final chapter because if we don't get this right in 10 years, it's all over. We call upon the global community to work with us. We want more ears, more attention in order to put forward uh, our challenge. Killing of rhinos is no longer a South African issue is a global issue.